Hello, welcome. This is my road bike check for 2021. What am I doing? What's the road bike check? Is it a review? Kind of, but not. This is my bike. It's not going back to Scott. This is a very requested video because I do a lot of on-bike films if you're not familiar with who I am. My name is Safa and these are my stomping grounds, the Santa Monica Mountains of LA. This is where I do a lot of my riding, really steep canyon climbs and descents. Pretty much every ride I do I'm hitting at least 50 miles an hour and going through corners at those speeds. So that's why people are interested in what I'm riding is because the speeds are normally very high and clearly an impressive bike to be able to handle that well. Now I have ridden the previous generations of Scott Addict. It's my favorite bike so this is definitely a biased opinion. It's still got that magic ride. It's a lot of fun to ride. It brings a lot of life into your riding style. One of the things I was worried about when we came to this new generation, which looks quite different from the last one, was maybe that magic would be gone and it would just be pure performance. But I was happy to find out it's actually an awesome bike. Exactly the same fun and, and magic that was in the last one. Now, what's changed and what's so striking about this bike is that there's no cables. The integration is on point. Scott's designed this so well. They've executed it perfectly. The tubes changed drastically as well from my last Scott. Everything has got an arrow look to it, an arrow edge to it. You can tell throughout the bike, even the seat post is arrow. Still oversized tubes, still very light bike. The Attic's always been Scott's lightweight climbing bike. This bike comes in around just over seven kilos. I don't fret too much. Once you get down towards seven kilos, it's a light enough bike. This year's paint is a matte job with a gloss on top. Really interesting kind of holographic matte, which I haven't seen before. We'll start off here with the integrated cockpit. This is Scott's in-house brand, Synchros Creston IC. It's a one piece. Cables run through down the front of the eccentric head and then they separate down to wherever they need to go. Well, this is DI2, Shimano DI2 Dura Ace, but last year I had the mechanical Dura Ace and it works exactly the same. It looks just the same. So no matter what group set you have, you get to hide the cables, the bike looks awesome. And it also does help with the uh, aero advantage. I have up front here, the Karoo 2 from Hammerhead. The Syncross mount, mount seen underneath, looks super clean, like it's just floating there. Now with the DI2, zero complaints. Everyone knows at this stage that it's the best Shimano's ever come out with, so I won't go into too much detail there. This is a 5236 mid-compact and at the back is 11 to 30, so that's a really nice range for, for the stuff I do up and down a lot. Pedal Mafia bottles and the cages are just Tac X. Um, dying of thirst. Pretty sure this is a 172.5 crank. It's a 172.5 crank. Now this doesn't come with a power meter, but I've installed, I've had a factory install of the four eyes, dual sided power meter on here. Been working great. I'm just starting to play around with power. So I'll bring that to the screen for you guys, courtesy of four eyes. So thank you guys for doing the quick turnaround on that. The pedals, they match the group set. These are DA pedals, Shimano Dura Ace. No issue there, I run the yellow cleats, nothing fancy, pretty straightforward. What works, works. So I've got the Syncros Capital One wheels that come with this. They're 21 millimeter internal, so for a road that's really wide and it's awesome for what I do. Tons of grip, they really blow the tires out nice and wide. They're 35 millimeters deep, so they're not super aero, but this bike is a lightweight climbing bike, so that makes sense that it comes with these. I wouldn't go any deeper myself personally, because all I do is climb and descend. So I'm not trying to get blown around by the wind, and I'm trying to keep it lightweight for the climbs. The fork has changed a fair bit too now that they're designing it just to have it for disc brakes. There's no rim brake version in this bike. And there's tons of clearance here. So I run 28s. These are the Vittoria courses. And 28s on these wide rims, there's still plenty of clearance front and back. You could put a 30 on here without having to worry about it. Now speaking of the tires, like I said, Vittoria Corsa Graphene 2.0. My favorite tires, all of my videos, all of my fast descents. This is what I run. I run this day in, day out. I don't mind that they might wear down a little faster than on the tires. I'm here for pure performance, speed and grip, that's it. Every day, 28s, pumped up to about 65, 60 PSI, depending on uh, how long the ride's gonna be with latex tubes in there. Now, one of the cool little James Bond features on this fork is the uh, way the disc brake attaches to it. It drills straight into the fork and then has this little magnetic uh, aero cover Never rattles, never does anything except look good. 160 millimeter rotors front and back. That comes standard on this bike. And if you, you know, this is a climbing bike, you're gonna do some descending. 
that's the sweet spot for me on a road bike. These are 12 millimeter through axles. They've sandwiched them in front and back. It's really smart and adds to a really stable and solid feel on this bike. The other parts that come from Syncross, apart from the bars, is the seat post and saddle. We've got a Duncan seat post, which is designed for this bike. So I always like an aero seat post because it looks good. And also you don't have to fidget around for five minutes trying to get your seat straight. I have the Bolcara cutout saddle in tan. It doesn't come with that, but otherwise this bike is stock. I've changed the tires and the saddle and that is it. This bike comes out stock, charged and ready to go. Under the saddle, you've got the tan skin grass back plan B micron saddle bag. That fits uh, two CO2s and a tube and a little multi-tool. And yeah, this bike is the same one you'll see, you know, in Grand Tours and in, in the Pro Peloton under DSM this year. So it's a really high-end race bike. Performance is there, stiffness is there. You can see the size of the chain stays, the bottom bracket shell is really large and the power transfer is there. When you get up, when you're on a climb and you stand up, it feels amazing. There's no give. But at the same time, this bike is really comfortable. Like that's the magic of the Addict. That's always why it's been my favorite bike. It makes you want to ride differently. It makes you want to have a lot of fun. It makes you want to jump around. But at the same time, if you want to go and hit up a race or you're just out there for pure performance, you have that too. And it's that magic blend that a lot of bikes, you know, you got to pick one or the other. And this one, you get the comfort. You can ride it on gravel if you want. You can ride it all day. You can race hard and you can just go out and fool around and have fun because there's a lot of life in this bike. The other thing they did uh, to update it when they brought out this version in 2020 was they dropped the seat stays, which you might think will give you a bit of a rougher ride. I think there's less flex in the back now, but this still doesn't beat you up at all. Look, it's not a bike review. I'm not going into millimeters and watts and all that. I don't know how they do it, but this bike is amazing in terms of comfort and in terms of performance. You can analyze it all you want. You can watch other reviews with more details, but they got the secret sauce. I've tried other bikes. No one's done it as well as Scott in terms of a road bike. The wheelbase, I will get a little technical, is a meter exactly on the 56 which is a little longer maybe than some bikes and also not as steep a rake. So the front end isn't super twitchy, but at the same time, it's not a dull feeling when you, when you ride it. Like I said, there's tons of life in this bike. It makes you want to have fun and party on this thing. And then when you're tracking through a corner, it's really, really stable. It gives you tons of confidence. I tell everyone, as soon as you get this bike, you get bonus confidence points just for owning it because of the way when you, you just kind of point and shoot and the bike, just tracks beautifully for you. There's no correcting in, in corners and feeling a little twitchy on the front end, which some of the higher end race bikes do have. You know, it's a super smooth and predictable ride, but at the same time, it doesn't lose any a spark to it. The main advantage for me is that there are other bikes you could go as fast on another bike. You know, all of these high end bikes are really great bikes, but this one lets you corner and handle the bike a lot better at high speeds, which is when you don't want any unpredictability or any doubt in your mind. I guess I should have some kind of closing. Should I just jump on and go straight down? My advice is get one, like yesterday. Because these are bikes that you want to, you know, I have last year's model, I don't want to sell it. They're such beautiful bikes. I think these are kind of timeless. I, you know, a lot of bikes seem to age weirdly. I don't think the Addict is one of those, especially this generation. So yeah, if you do have a chance to get one, my totally biased uh, advice is run out and get one as soon as you can. So super stoked to have one. Definitely my favorite bike of all time on any terrain, any kind of bike. I love this bike. It's biased, but it's true.